The Met Gala is defined by three things. Glitz, glamour, and organic, gluten-free, cringe. The gala is supposed to be about charity, but we all know nobody cares about that. For us peasants, the Met Gala is an excellent source of rage bait. But for our glittering elites, it's all about the attention. And of course, the money. The Met Gala is hosted by this woman, Anna Wintour. She is the editor-in-chief of Vogue. If you don't know Vogue, it's the queen of all fashion magazines. And if you don't know fashion, don't worry. Nobody attending the Met Gala knows anything about fashion either. A ticket to the Met Gala costs $50,000 and a table for 10 goes for $300,000. All that money goes to charity and then immediately gets claimed as a tax deduction. But don't think, even for a second, that having $50,000 lying around means you can buy a ticket to the gala. You can't. It's the most exclusive party in the whole world. In fact, the only party more exclusive than the Met Gala is the one I'm throwing in my room later tonight. I don't expect a lot of folks. Just me and my old friend, Loneliness. We always hung out together, 24-7. Now, back to the Met Gala. The only way you get to attend the Met Gala is if Anna Wintour invites you. Even if you drop 300 grand on a table, Anna still has to approve all your guests. She has the final say on everything. If Anna Wintour doesn't know you exist, you can't go. If she hates you, you can't go. And if she likes you, you can go until she stops liking you. Just like her good friend, Harvey, over here. And one more thing. Anna Wintour decides on the dress code and can veto any of your fashion choices. In 2014, Madonna wanted to free the nipple. Sadly, for all horny boys across the world, Anna Wintour said no. She told Madonna to wear something else. Like the mature, 60-something-year-old woman that she is, Madonna threw a tantrum and refused to go to the party. According to my hallucinations, nobody cared. One year later, a less angry Madonna returned to hang out with the cool kids. She was wearing a dress that Anna had approved. If you have been paying attention, you may realize that all this sounds very elitist, silly, and petty. It's classism on top of classism on top of even more classism. So, why do so many people who are already rich and famous bend the knee to Anna Wintour? Why do they kiss the ring and obey all her petty little rules? It's simple, it's worth it for them. In the entertainment industry, going to the Met Gala is one of those things that proves you have finally made it. That and being on the cover of Vogue. Anna Wintour controls both of those things. Anybody who matters in fashion or entertainment gets invited to the Met Gala. Anna holds the keys to the room. So, being on her bad side means losing access to a lot of money. This begs the question, where does the money come from? There are two major sources of money at the Met Gala. Fashion houses and rich people. Rich people buying the love of the plebs by donating money to charity and then making a big fuss about it. It's easy enough to understand. But how do fashion houses like Chanel, Gucci and Versace fit into all this? To understand that, we have to understand the fundraiser. It's held for the benefit of the Costume Institute of the Metropolitan Museum of Art. The Costume Institute is not a museum for Van Gogh's or Picasso's. It's a museum for clothes. But don't mail them your favorite sock just yet. They'll sniff it and pass out. If you're guessing that only clothes made by famous designers get preserved, you guessed right. The more connected you are in fashion, the higher the chances of getting your stuff preserved. Donating to the museum doesn't hurt either. For luxury fashion houses, donating to the Costume Institute and sending their designers to the Met Gala is a no-brainer. The donations are tax-deductible 
and its free publicity. The Met Gala is a huge marketing event for fashion brands. They get tons of media coverage for zero dollars. But the Met Gala wouldn't be so glamorous if it was only attended by a bunch of boring businessmen and Italian fashion designers. It wouldn't be trending on Twitter or getting talked about everywhere else. The glamour that ties it all together is provided by Hollywood. Musicians, actors, actresses, and whatever on earth the Kardashians are. But these people don't attend the Met Gala out of the goodness of their hearts. They usually don't even pay for their own tickets. They are often invited as guests by fashion houses. If you see your favorite star at the Met Gala in a Versace dress, there is a pretty good chance that Versace is paying for her attendance. Some celebrities pay for their own ticket, but they can always count on walking out with an endorsement deal from Gucci or a custom fragrance from Chanel. The 50000 they pay to be in the room is more than worth it, even if they strike out and live without any brand deals. The publicity is still good for their careers. The money is also a charitable contribution, so they can just deduct it from their tax bill. Whichever way you slice it, attending the Met Gala provides an excellent return on investment. The Met Gala is a win-win for everyone. The rich get positive publicity. Fashion brands get free marketing. Celebrities get paid just to be there. And the museum raises enough money to fund itself. In 2022, the Met Gala raised $17.4 million for the Costume Institute. The money that the gala's attendees raised for themselves from all the networking they did inside the room is unknown, but it's definitely a lot more than 17 million. So, as you watch and groan at the ridiculous outfits on display at the Met Gala, remember that there is only one sound these people care about. Ka-ching.